Hey everyone, it is Alex again, and I am back with another video, and this is the second video for my second build of the league, and I just want to go ahead and show off what I've done with the character and what I've been able to do with it. It's been uh, a pretty damn fun build. So, to just kind of go over what uh, what mechanics we're working with here, the main thing is we are a Echo Forge, Blade Storm, Occultist. So we are doing pure chaos damage with our blade storm, and we simply just kind of AOE around. And this is pure chaos damage. We're gonna have the sick, nasty, profane bloom going on with all of that, uh, with our despair on hit ring, and so clear feels very nice. Uh, there's going to be a uh, a video. Um, at the end of this video that showcases my delirium clear as well as a video showcasing a bit of single target with a boss so getting into the build and uh how i felt about it well it has been very nice for clear obviously because we are a cultist and we scale a lot of aoe and crit and chaos damage so things are going to feel nice for clear with profane bloom especially on particularly dense maps um, so that has felt good. Tankiness honestly also felt pretty nice. We're going for the Lore Weave Eternal Damnation combination, which I discussed in the first video, uh, and this results in a very nice amount of elemental mitigation, and then you have 78 Chaos Res, which is usually more than enough. The main pitfall is going to be physical damage, and I do a few things here to fix that. Uh, and then Single Target. Single Target is a bit hit or miss. You're going to have to have your totems up, uh, you're going to need to make sure they have the wither stacks on them. You're gonna, there's a little bit of a ramp getting your four storms onto the boss. And then even then, once you've done all of that, you're probably looking somewhere in the range, I think, of like maybe five, six, maybe seven million DPS with gear I have right now. So it is definitely not the most amazing single target in the world. Uh, I was having issues with sustain as well, but I have done a few things to fix that. Uh, the main one being, uh, and I guess I can just go ahead and go over this because this is one of the biggest changes to the build I've made since the first video. That is my Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh setup for Liege of the Primordial. So this does have some trade-offs because obviously you are spending two flasks, uh, two jewel sockets to be able to run this. And the trade-offs, the bonuses you get from it are more like freeing up your gear suffixes, particularly in the case of the Ice Golem. Um, and so then you can do more with your gear slots. So if you take this and then don't take advantage of those extra gear slots, you don't get a whole lot out of it, and it's usually would just be better to run a couple 50c rare jewels or something for damage in life. Uh, but it does help in a few key ways. It was about four divines to get the two together, and I thought it was a neat little tech that I could throw into the build. And particularly for bossing, it makes things a lot nicer because we run a stone golem. So for right now, I am running a Flame Golem, which is when I run for Clear, because for Clear, we do not need Life Regen. But for Single Target, a Stone Golem provides us with quite a lot of Life Regen with all the increased Golem effect. So, uh, again, the Golem effect really comes into play when it uh, comes to our Ice Golem. So the Ice Golem gives us this accuracy rating, this increased accuracy rating. Between Liege of the Primordial with 100% increased buff effect and the increased buff effect here... Ice Golem is giving us something like 90% increased accuracy, so somewhere around there. Which basically means that with my previous gear that I had, once I added this jewel to the build, I suddenly was getting uh, like 5,000 accuracy, which is way above what I need. And so I was able to free up this ring. And this is where fixing recovery alongside the Stone Golem comes into play. Gain 20 life per enemy hit with attacks. For things like uh, Bladestorm, we actually can hit very, very fast. Each one of these four storms is also hitting at the same rate that I'm attacking here. So we end up with actually pretty nice hit rate, even on single targets. It's going to heal us a few hundred HP a second, probably. Um, against clear, it's basically instant full health constantly. You have infinite recovery, essentially. The only way you die is a one-shot. Uh, and so with all this extra mitigation we have, it actually leads to us being a fairly tanky build when it comes to clearing and... In this case, I did a lot of delirium mapping, which is what you'll see at the end of the video, if you want to just skip to that timestamp to get a glimpse of what that's like. So, 
those were those were the really big changes and the reason I went for this golem setup. Uh, and actually, there's one more reason. The third golem that we run is a chaos golem. This fixes the last problem of the build's tank, which is its fizz mitigation. Maybe not fix is the right word, but it definitely helps a lot. This is going to give us something, I think, 11-12% fizz damage mitigation, which is going to really, really help with that, along with our armor, endurance charges. Um, it adds up to being fairly tanky. Uh, we also run um, Fortify support here. It hurts our single target, but the tank bonus is quite a bit. All right, so I think that is all the different mechanics I have gone for with the changes in the build since the first video. I am, however, going to go ahead and just run you through all my gear and gems and things so that you can get an idea of where the build is now. And uh, if you want to replicate it, you can go from there. So, main thing, Echo Forge, again, flat chaos. This is somewhere around a mid-roll, mid-roll attack speed, pretty high roll life, high roll flat damage, and then mid-roll area of effect. I bought this for one divine uh, about a week ago. Um, you can get something similar to this, I think, right now for about one divine. Uh, and then you can obviously get better for something like 10 divines, you can get good life and good attack speed with decent base damage. And I would get somewhere around the range of 12 to 15% more DPS by doing that. And that would be a nice upgrade for the build with basically no drawback, just it costs more divines. Uh, then again, the main setup with Lore Weave, Eternal Damnation. Uh, basically the way this works, Eternal Damnation would usually drop my resistances down to 70 max, but we get this elemental damage reduction equal to half our Chaos Res. But if we saw it in Lore Weave here, we instead keep our resistances at 78. So Lore Weave is essentially giving us 8 maximum resistance instead of only 3. And so that means that we get 78 divided by 2, which is going to hit you with 39% elemental damage reduction on top of Fortify, which I believe is multiplicative. You're going to end up, um, before Fortify, somewhere in the range of equivalent of like 87 maximum resistances for elemental and 78 chaos. And then fortify on top of that, we end up with a very large elemental hit pool. I think on POB without Molten Shell, it's something like 60,000, which I think is double what my first Chieftain had for elemental damage. Where the build struggles is physical damage, and we do a few things to fix that. Like I said, uh, we're running this Chaos Golem, we're running Endurance Charges with Enduring Composure, and we are running a uh, Determination with this Watcher's Eye for more physical damage mitigation, an Armor Flask, and Molten Shell. That's what we're trying to do to fix the physical damage. Uh, helmet. So we've got the enchant now. I did get the enchant. Um, this helmet was annoying to craft, and I just kind of gave up, to be honest. I needed the strength. I needed the cold res. So I said, all right, I'll stop here. I was alt spamming them. Went ahead, just crafted life, called that done for now. I actually uh, saved myself an imprint. Uh, it was maximum power charges and, I believe, T3 strength. I did need the strength in this build very badly, so that was something I was willing to save. And the power charge is just simply so unbelievably rare that I decided I would imprint that. Imprints were not particularly expensive. So I decided to go for that. Maybe not worth the imprint. I actually rolled over something much better. It was one power charge and T1 high rolled accuracy rating. It was like 590 accuracy rating. And I just YOLO regaled it, and it bricked it. And... Uh, I really screwed up on that. I should have imprinted that one. 600 accuracy rating with the power charge as an imprint would have been worth probably quite a bit of money. Obviously, Bladestorm is a bit of a weird enchant, but, you know, maybe someone that doesn't need an enchant would pay for that. Anyway, that's how I made this helmet. Uh, gloves. These I basically just bought using the new POV tool. I think I had these in the last video. Um, it's just a lot of attack speed, damage during flask effect. I rolled some uh, Elder's Currency on there for the Implicits, Life, and Resistance Craft. Uh, this belt upgrade I got, um, some more resist on it, and then I was able to get some more stats on this jewel. Stats, particularly dexterity, is very rough for this build. Uh, these boots are the same one as last time as well. I don't think I've done anything to this. Uh, it's just a lot of life, resist, move speed, and brittle ground. Uh, then we've got our despair ring. This hasn't changed. It's just life, despair, accuracy rating. And then, again, this life gain on hit ring. Dexterity. Really tough problem with this build. I managed to find this bad boy. Uh, I think it was 100C or something. I don't exactly remember. Life gain on hit apparently is not particularly well, uh, not particularly high valued. So this is max roll 20 life gain on hit. Um, actually, I don't even think it was 100C. I think this is actually pretty cheap. So this has solved uh, recovery and mapping, and it helps with recovery and single target. Very nice uh, put into the build. I did change my flask around a little bit. 
Um, I switched out my diamond flask suffixes to have bleeding immunity because I used to have that on a life flask. My life flask became a sulfur flask and I got reduced effect of curses. That reduced effect of curses on top of this wheel here means that we get pretty high amount of reduced effect of curses. I used to have a jewel that gave reduced effect of curses, but I slotted in this megalomaniac, which I'll go over in a second. That is new as well. Uh, and I think that is it for the changes on the gear. As far as skill gems, uh, Bladestorm, Power Charge on Crit, Void Manipulation, Fortify, and Crit Damage are all the same. I swapped out Crit Strikes for Multi Strike because, according to POB, that was a solid like 13% more DPS if they were on the Brutal Round. So I went ahead and did that. It also makes mapping a little smoother. So big upgrade there. Also a lot more life gain on hit. Uh, I believe the totems have been left alone. Uh, I may have not had multiple totems in it in the first video. I went ahead and added that. But we've got Ancestor War Chief, multiple totems, Ruthless, Crit Damage, and Void Manipulation. Um, this would obviously be better as a six link, but I went ahead and just used the extra socket space for the Golem setup. Obviously I could get a ring with uh, Unset and that would hold one of the Golems, which would be nice. Uh, and then we've got our withering step, of course. This is very, very, very important for single target. you got to press this button every time you're near something. It'll go ahead and give it six withered stacks, and then that gives you time for the occultist passive to keep stacking withered stacks, uh, this one right here. So it helps with single target quite a bit. I believe there's an alt quality to get more stacks, and I think at level 21 it also gets more stacks. Uh, so this could be, I think, more like 10 stacks uh, if you went really all out on it, and that'd be a lot stronger. Blood Rage, of course. Uh, assassin mark mark on hit got haste and vol haste summon ice golem determination molten shell precision chaos golem blood and sand and then a leap slam for movement uh, and i think that covers our gems and gear as far as the tr tree i'm gonna go with uh just show you the megalomaniac first here um, I went ahead and added this into the build uh, fairly recently. I was really looking for a generic calling strike. I wanted it to work for clear as well as single target. Obviously, I could slot calling strike into the totem or something, but I decided that uh, I wanted generic. So went ahead, searched Megalomaniac for Duedry's Gluttony plus any useful medium or any useful node. I searched all kinds of stuff. Uh, the AoE, the crit, any of the chaos larges, any of the two-handed sword larges, any of those. Found this. I think it's 150C. It's got Savage Response, which is a pretty nice uh, thing. I get Savage hit pretty frequently. And then I grabbed Fire Attunement, which actually ended up being very nice because it helps with Ignites and Burning Ground is unaffected, which is very, very nice quality of life, particularly when uh, PoE strikes with, you know, visibility and you can't tell if you're standing on Burning Ground or not, and Ignites are pretty dangerous for the build. Uh, the large cluster jewel, we're running the life leech, the mana leech, very important for the build, otherwise you don't have it. And then just some extra damage here. Again, the AoE cluster, which helps for explosions as well as your main attack. And then enduring composure for those endurance charges. We don't self-proc these, so these do not have 100% uptime. While you're clearing, it is basically 100%. Against single target, not so much. We have the additional curse to be able to fit the assassin mark into the build. Some reservation. I grabbed this golem wheel so we can have the third golem and more effect. Of course, the forbidden flesh, power charge, power charge stacking, crit wheel. The uh, mastery is the fizz convert. This is actually more DPS than the effect of withered, um, and it also happens more instantly. And then uh, life. We need the stats right here and these resists. Very nice quality of life. It is unfortunately basically just for the resists and stats, but it's pretty point efficient for that. Life. I take this for the Chaos Res, Reduce Effective Curses, and the CB Immunity. I don't have a jewel that I can easily get CB Immunity with. I went with the Totem Attack Speed and Increased Damage Setup. There's no gear that supports this, it's just from the tree. Um, if you hit a much higher level, 96, 98, 100, and then got enough Chaos Res and CB Immunity in your gear that you can drop this, you could probably drop the Minion Setup and grab a second Cluster Jewel. That's definitely an upgrade you could go for. I believe that would be more damage. I have not looked into it, but I think it requires that you go higher level. If you don't want to go a second cluster jewel, but you do get higher level, the way to go is going to be uh, grabbing Throat Seeker here. Just path over and grab that. Uh, we need Accuracy, Life, Life, Power Charge, our Watcher's Eye, of course. This is a 3 mod, Fizz Damage Mitigation, the Attack Speed, and the Onslaught. I got this for four divines, I think, uh, pretty early on. I got lucky. The determination alone is pretty expensive. 
and then um, most people don't value this onslaught haste rune uh, haste mod, so I got that I think for basically free. I paid for the determination precision devil mod, uh, life reservation, and the minion setup. Uh, as far as the uh, ascendancy, of course we got the orphan bloom, got the power charge stacking, and the two chaos nodes, obviously. So I think that pretty much covers uh, the character. I know I went through that pretty quickly. I uh, go through pretty much the same information in the first video, so I didn't want to move too slowly on this one. So yeah, uh, as far as upgrades to the build. Uh, first, like I said, going for that Cluster Jewel, getting more levels. Getting gear that has a Chaos Resistance so you can drop that Chaos Wheel in the center. Buying a better Echo Forge is going to be a big one. Getting a much better helmet than I have right now, particularly with more stats or more resists. Um, if you get life or the Fizz taken as prefix, um, you can craft the other one. So we would like to have this on that helmet. It would be very, very useful for our Fizz mitigation. So if you can get life naturally on the helmet, you can then craft this. Or if you get this naturally on the helmet, I believe it is a Warlord mod, you can then craft life. So that is something that you really want to look for. Unfortunately, I decided to go kind of poor on the helmet and just went with this. Um, I just bought the helmet high item level Royal Borgenet with the Bladestorm enchant and uh, just slapped a Warlord Exalt on there. So this helmet could certainly be improved upon. Uh, I believe this Despair Ring is pretty much as good as it's going to get. Um, you can also get a lot better stitching vines with more resists. You can get influence, have percent life on it, things like that. Life total is definitely very low on this build. Mitigation is high, so any amount of life that you can fit onto the build is a big upgrade. Uh, the gloves can almost certainly be better. Uh, it's got very few things going for it on this one, to be quite honest. It's got the two T1 damage mods, but otherwise it's pretty much blank. There's definitely a lot you can do here, particularly, like I said, with resists and the like. If socket pressure is a problem, and say you want to have a 6-link Ancestor Warchief instead of a 5-link, but oh, where do I put the golems? The answer is going to be Woke Orbing this ring, getting the life gain on hit, and then slapping Assassin Mark on it. This build does not need the Assassin Mark quality for power charge on hit, because we simply generate power chargers anyway, with power charge on crit, and occultist, and on kill. So, you could put the Assassin Mark on this ring, or I suppose this ring, but I think it's easier here. And then you save yourself the mark on hit and the assassin mark, and you could easily six link your ancestral war chief, and maybe even fit. Uh, you could also maybe fit an ancestral protector setup. You do multiple totems, ancestral protector, and then vol ancestral war chief. You'll be able to fit both totem buffs, and that will get you a lot more single target. However, I found managing even just one type of totem uh, to be kind of annoying in a boss fight, so I would not necessarily recommend that unless you path to here. You totally could take these tank nodes for totems and then grab the linger for three seconds mod. That's going to make that whole situation buttery smooth. The totems will tank way more with all this extra life and resists and fizz mitigation, and they will linger. And so I think if you took those four points, you could easily justify taking both totems. I do think you start ending up having a bit of a conflict on what you want to anoint, whether it's going to be power charge or Panopticon at that point, once you have both totems. Uh, as far as any other upgrades, uh, you could obviously corrupt the lore weave, get some things out of that. Um, I, I think that about covers it. Uh, awakened Void Manipulation, Awakened Multi-Strike, things like that. Uh, a Bottled Faith is definitely a decent damage option. It's not as high as it is on other builds, because the increased damage taken by enemies is additive with withered and so that increased damage taken is not as valuable as you might think you mostly are getting the crit chance and the increased damage from the sulfur flask so i opted for not going bottled faith because i needed the other suffixes out of the magic flasks oh and i guess i never mentioned the forbidden taste in this video uh, this is basically just a nice little instant heal when you take a big hit i'll take a big hit it'll proc i'll recover 100 percent of life on use, and then I'll start taking a Chaos Damage degen, but we have 78 Chaos Resist, so this is only something like a 5% degen or so. Alright, um, and the uh, gauntlets that are sitting here, I just spec these in when I'm running my Delirium maps to go ahead and grab Rampage at the start, then I go ahead and glove swap over back to these for the rest of the map, and it'll maintain uh, the uh, Rampage. 
it'll uh, essentially snapshot it, and you'll keep getting it. Alright, uh, I think that pretty much covers the build and what it has been doing. And uh, yeah, I think that is it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, then up next is going to be the uh, recording of me doing a delirium map. I run the mirrors with Abyss and Harbinger and some shrines. So you'll go ahead and go ahead and see that. And then there will also be a fight. And I think it will be, I'll do it right after I record this. It'll probably be Searing Exarch. So uh, it'll be non-Uber. I'm not. This is definitely not an Uber viable build. Not at this level of investment. Um, but I'll probably do a regular Searing Exarch and go ahead and show that off. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next build. to go.
absurd defiance ends here, hatchling. Are you ready, my champion? Annihilation. Disintegration. Cleansing. Incineration. Annihilation. The fires of a thousand suns. I shall extinguish them all. You do not have the strength, Hatchling. That may be, but I am not alone. How pathetic. This realm shall be studied by... Disintegration. Cleansing. Incineration. The fires of a thousand suns. I shall extinguish them all. This realm shall be stuck. Incineration. Annihilation. Annihilation. Incineration. Or at least until the 